this is Ma'am Buen again. We're now going to discuss accounting treatment for business transactions of a merchandising concern. We have three types of businesses as far as industry is concerned. We have the service industry, we have the merchandising concern or merchandising industry, and the third one is manufacturing concern or manufacturing industry. For service industry, we earned our income by rendering services. It is the service industry that we dealt with uh, uh, in discussing the steps in accounting cycle. And for those transactions or for those companies, for the problems that we have solved, we earned our revenue by rendering services. And what are the examples of companies in, uh, engaged in service industry? We have the banks or the banking system, the janitorial services, security agency, uh, laundry company. So those are examples of companies engaged in service wherein, as I have said, we earned our, uh, our revenue, our income by rendering service. And we have the merchandising concern. So, in merchandising concern, how do we earn our revenue? It is by buying and selling a certain product. So, in merchandising company, again, we earn our revenue by buying a certain product and sell it with a profit. Examples of companies uh, or, or uh, businesses engaged in uh, merchandising are the department store, the malls, the grocery store, we have the drug store. Uh, so those are examples of, of businesses engaged in merchandising company. And we have the third one, we have the manufacturing company. In manufacturing company, say, uh, revenues are also earned by selling. So what's the difference between merchandising and manufacturing? In merchandising, as I have said, it is we're going to purchase a product and sell it with a profit. While in manufacturing company, we're going to produce a new product out of raw materials and then sell it with a profit. Examples of manufacturing companies are uh, Procter & Gamble, we have Colgate, Palmolive, we have pharmaceutical companies. So those are examples of businesses engaged in manufacturing company. Okay, so again we're going to discuss the merchandising concern. Since merchandising is uh, buying and selling, it means the bulk of our transactions are buying and selling. And from these transactions, we have a, a new account titles. We have purchases. we have purchases when we purchase the merchandise that we're going to sell and we have sales when we sell the merchandise which we purchase for sale okay so every time that we purchase merchandise our entry is debit purchases so purchases is always on the debit side and what will be on the credit side? It is either cash or accounts payable. So these two are credit side. For sales, since sales is our revenue account, sales is on the credit side in our entry. And what will be the partner of this, which means what will be on the debit side, it is either cash or accounts receivable. Which means this two account, cash and accounts receivable, will be on the debit side. Okay. Which means when we prepare our entry, when we purchase the merchandise that we're going to sell, our entry will be debit purchases 
and if we're going to pay it at once then credit cash or if it is on account it will be credit accounts payable okay so take note that purchases the classification of purchases is an expense that is why it is on the debit side of course our sales is a revenue that is why it is on the credit side take note that we're going to use only these two account purchases and sales if what we purchase or what uh, what we purchase is we purchase it with the intention of selling it same with the sales we only use the account title sales if what we sell is the product which is intended for sale example is uh we are our company our business is a bookstore we purchase say office supplies uh band paper yellow pad ball pen pencil pen so in that case since we purchase those items which will be sold later our entry is debit purchases and credit accounts payable if it is on account or credit cash if we pay it at once take note our business is a bookstore and we purchase merchandise which we intend to sell later and that is say band paper yellow pad ball pen pencil pen so those are items that we're going to sell and our entry is debit purchases and credit cash but if we are into a uh, say an insurance company we are in a, a our business is an insurance company we purchase the same item that is bond paper yellow pad ball pen pencil pen uh, whiteboard eraser so why we purchase those we purchase those for the intention of using it in our business and in that case our entry is debit office supplies and credit cash or credit accounts payable okay again we only use purchases and sales account when what we purchase is intended for sale for sale and at the same time what we sell is the item that we really sell for our business example for sales is that say we are a dealer of uh, we are a car dealer so when we sell our say our transaction is sold five units of car that is say five million our entry is debit cash and credit sales five million because that is our business we sell we are a dealer of car and we sell cars okay but what if we are engaged in say uh, a transportation company and the old transport uh, the old cars that we have been using we sell it because we're going to have a new car so our entry will be debit cash and credit transportation equipment why because the cars that we sell we purchase it not intended for for sale but intended to be used in the business and since we sell it it is not credit sales but instead it is credit transportation equipment okay so how are we going to determine if it is a purchases or sales transaction if there is a word merchandise So if there is a word merchandise then it means that is that we're going to use purchases and sales account example uh, purchase merchandise it means that we're going to uh, prepare our entry debit purchases and credit accounts payable sold merchandise it means that our entry will be debit cash and credit sales if we if our entry is purchase office supplies then our entry will be debit office supplies and credit 
accounts payable or or cash. Purchase, say another transaction is uh, purchase office furnitures. Then our entry will be debit office furnitures and credit uh, accounts payable. Okay. Since our business is buy and sell, it is not. It is just normal for us that we have a discount if we purchase it we can ask for a discount from our supplier and if we are the seller we can give discount to our uh, customer we have uh, two kinds of discount we have trade discount and we have cash discount for trade discount these are discounts given by the seller to promote the sale of the item. Example of this is 50% discount, buy one, take one. So, why did we give, if we are the seller, why did we give, uh, why, we, uh, why did we advertise that we have 50% discount in our items, we have 70% discount, uh, or we offer buy one, take one? Why? Because we want the we want to promote the sale of our merchandise to sell the merchandise. Okay, and usually trade discount are not recorded in our transaction. We record our sales and purchases net of trade discount. Example: the tag price of our of the merchandise that we purchase is say ten thousand, and our supplier offered us 30% discount so that is if that is 10,000 and they offer us a 30% discount so it means 70% remain so that is 7,000 we record our purchases net of trade discount it means that we're going to record our purchases debit purchases 7,000 only 7,000 and credit accounts payable 7,000 again trade discount are not recorded it uh, we're, go we're going to record our purchases and sales net of trade net of trade discount which means the discount were already de deducted when we off when we record our transaction another example say we sell our product for 10,000 and we offer 20% discount to our customer. It means that that is 8,000. Net invoice price is 8,000. So when we record our transaction, it will be debit accounts receivable and credit sales 8,000. Okay. What about this one? We have the cost discount. Cost discount are given by the by the seller to the buyer to its customer to encourage them to pay uh, to pay promptly or to pay before its due date example of cash discount are we have 2 10 and 30 it means that we're going to give them 2% discount if they can pay it within 10 days net of 30 days so the due date is after 30 days but we encourage them to get to pay uh, to pay us uh, within two days, I uh, within ten days, and we're going to give them two percent discount. If we are the buyer, if we're going to pay it within ten days, then we can avail a two percent discount. Again, cash discount is recorded. So this is what we're going. Uh, what is referred as purchase discount if we are the buyer and sales discount if we are the seller also it is normal for our transaction to have returns and allowances if we are the buyer it is purchase returns and allowances and if we are the seller that is sales returns and allowances so what is this purchase returns and sales returns if we are the buyer 
sometimes there are some cases or uh, instances wherein the materials or the merchandise delivered to us have some defects so what are we going to do we're going to return it to our supplier so that is purchase returns and allowances same with sales returns and allowances sometimes uh, there are some cases wherein we delivered to our customer a defective merchandise or uh, it was ruined during the, the transfer of the merchandise from from us to our customer and in that case our customer might uh, return it or they will return it to us what about this allowance say uh, the order our supply uh, our customer ordered us uh, a size size uh, medium but erroneously we delivered small so instead of returning the items to us they just ask for an allowance a discount okay so that is allowances and the same for purchase return for chase discount and purchase returns this two is on uh the uh, debit side or credit this is on the credit side and what will be on the debit side that is cash or accounts payable these two are on the, the debit side okay so our entry say we avail a discount from our from our supplier we pay within the discount period so our entry it will be debit accounts payable and credit uh, purchase discount okay so in case that we already paid those items so it means that they're going to refund us so our entry will be debit cash and credit purchase returns and allowances for our sales uh, sales discount and sales returns and allowances will be on the debit side and the credit will be cash or accounts receivable okay so this will be on the credit side say we have wrong deliveries to our but to our customer they returned it to us so our entry will be uh, debit sales returns and allowances if it is already paid we're going to refund it to our customer so credit cash if it is still unpaid that is on account so it will be credit accounts receivable okay to summarize this one your purchases is debit and the partner of that is cash and accounts receivable it is on credit your purchase discount and purchase returns and allowances is credit so it is the the other side of purchases purchases is debit purchase discount purchase returns is credit and usually their partner is cash and accounts receivable for sales sales is credit sales discount and sales returns and allowances is debit the partners are we have cash and accounts receivable which is on the other side okay we have freight in and we have freight out okay what is freight in this is delivery charges of merchandise purchase and freight out this is delivery charges of merchandise sold okay it means that we're going to use the account title freight in for delivery charges of merchandise purchase and we're going to 
use the account title freight out for delivery charges of merchandise sold. Sometimes it is called transportation in or and this one is transportation out. We have FOB shipping point and FOB destination. FOB shipping point is freight in and FOB destination is freight out. Because as a general rule, whoever is the owner of the merchandise uh, while it is in transit or while it is shipped from the seller to the buyer, he should pay the freight charges. Okay? Let me repeat it. As a general rule, whoever is the owner of the merchandise uh, being transported from the seller to the buyer, he should pay the freight charges. For FOB shipping point, the ownership of the merchandise transferred from the seller to the buyer in the point of shipment. It means, which means that it is already the, the buyer uh, who owns that particular merchandise while it is transported from the seller to the buyer. That is why it is freight in. If it is FOB destination, the ownership transfer from the seller to the buyer on the point of destination or when the buyer receives the merchandise, which means that it is still the seller who owns that particular merchandise while it is it has been transported from the buyer to the seller. That is why, since the buyer is the owner, he should pay the freight charges and that and that is called a freight out. Okay, we have FOB shipping point freight prepaid. Okay, so we have again FOB shipping point freight prepaid. From the term itself, prepaid, which means that uh, the, the freight charges were paid in advance. For FOB shipping point, who is the owner of the merchandise or who should pay the, the, the freight charges of the merchandise? It is the buyer. But if it is freight prepaid, it means it is the seller who pays the, the freight charges. And in that case, uh, if it is on account, it means that the, the freight charges will be added to the receivable of the seller from the buyer. Okay? Let me repeat it. For FOB shipping point freight prepaid, it means that it is the seller who pays the freight charges because it is prepaid. But the question is, who should pay the freight charges? It is the buyer who should pay the freight charges but the seller paid it in advance so it means that the the freight charges will be added to the accounts receivable of the seller from the buyer example uh, sold merchandise F, uh, terms fob shipping point freight prepaid uh, 10,000 freight charges is 2,000. Okay? So, the, the, the seller will prepare an entry, debit accounts receivable, that is uh, accounts receivable of uh, 12,000, then credit sales of, te of 10,000, and credit cash of 2,000. Okay? Again, our example. Sold merchandise. FOB. Shipping point. Freight. 
prepaid. 10,000. 2,000 for freight. Okay. Our entry, if we are the seller, is debit accounts receivable. That is 12,000 because we pay the 2,000. So, that is 12,000. Credit sales. Our sales is only 10,000. And since we pay for the 2,000 freight, it is credit cash of 2,000. We're not going to record the 2,000 freight because that is freight in. Okay? Why? Because it is shipping point. And uh, if it is shipping point, it is freight in. And who will record this one? It is the buyer who should record, who should record this freight in. So, it will not be recorded in our transaction if we are the seller. So, our entry will be debit accounts receivable 12,000, credit sales of 10,000, and credit cash of 2,000. If we are the, the, the buyer, our entry will be debit purchases of 10,000, debit freight in of 2,000, and credit cash of tw oh, sorry credit uh, accounts payable since it is in account of 12,000 but just the same I just put it accounts payable because the seller uh, recorded it as accounts receivable but if it is already paid in cash so it will be credit cash Okay, take note that if this is our transaction and the account were paid or collected within the discount period, say we have 2, 10, and 30, take note that the 2% will be applicable only to 10,000. Say we pay within the discount period and our terms is 2, 10, and 30, we can only avail discount for 10,000 not for 12,000 so how much is 2% uh, of 10,000 so that is 10,000 times 0 0.02 so that is 200 Pla, uh, 200 it means that out of 10,000 that is 9,800 net is 9,008 plus the 2,000 so the total payment that we're going to uh, pay is the total cost that we're going to pay is eleven thousand eight hundred. So our entry will be debit accounts payable of twelve thousand, then credit cash and credit purchase discount. So cost is 11,800 and discount is 200 okay then let me repeat it again uh, in that case in this case we can only avail discount from the 10,000 not from the 12,000 we should not include the 2,000 freight uh, from the discount from the total discount that we can ask for so our entry is debit accounts payable which is 12,000 credit cost of 11,008 and credit purchase discount of 200 another one is we have FOB destination freight collect okay if it is FOB destination freight collect it means that since it is collect it means that the the buyer pays for the freight charges it is FOB destination who should pay the freight charges it is the seller but it is the buyer who pays for it for it it means that it will affect the accounts receivable or accounts payable of both buyer and seller if we are the seller say the same transaction sold merchandise 
Okay. The same transaction. Sold merchandise. F O B C A. Sold merchandise. F O B. Destination. Uh, freight. Collect. For uh, the same, it is ten thousand. And two thousand freight. Okay, our entry will be debit accounts receivable since it is F of the destination, we should record it is uh, it is we should record our freight charges and that is freight out. It is us who should record the freight charges and that is freight out. So, but who pays for the freight charges? It is a uh, freight collect. It is the buyer who pays for the freight charges. So, what is the effect of that to our collectibles or our accounts receivable from the buyer, from the seller? It will deducted from our accounts receivable. So, instead of 10,000, it will be 8,000. And we have freight out of 2,000 and credit sales of 10,000 okay if we are the seller our entry will be uh, if we are the buyer our entry will be it is debit purchases of 10,000 Credit accounts payable of 8,000. And since we pay for the freight charges, credit cash of 2,000. Okay? So the same, when we pay it, if we are the buyer and we pay it within the discount period, we can ask discount for the 10,000. Not for the accounts payable of 8. We can ask for the 10,000. Same with if we are the seller and our buyer, our customer pays us within the discount period, then they can avail discount for the whole of 10,000, for the sale of 10,000. So take note, we're going to base our discount always on the sales or in the purchases. Sales is 10,000. Same with same here we're going to avail from the purchases of 10,000 not in the accounts payable okay so for our next uh, video that will be transa or a pro uh, illustrative problem on how to journalize a transaction for a merchandising concern